Sunday. So let's sit down and talk about what Jesus did for Teresa. Yes. Amen. So where are you from, Teresa? Uh, oh, man. Well, we've been married 14 years, and we've moved 14 times. So that's kind of a, right now. You're from everywhere. We're, from, we're in Michigan right now, um, but in, we believe that's home. So, for a while? Yeah, for, God willing, we are putting down roots there, and that's, and that's home. So where did you grow up? Grew up in Iowa on a farm. Oh, really? I was a farm girl in Iowa. It was great. And so how did you hear about our ministry? How did you come to be here? This is, this is kind of a funny story. So a couple of years before we came, a friend of ours had given us one of your, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to come and, and share, and I'm honored to be here. And I'm not going to cry, okay? Maybe I will, right, so I might Kleenex need tissues. Up here. She no, will cry. No, I won't. I'm, I'm, ex, I'm, ex, I'm excited. I am so full. Thank you, I don't know about you all, but the box, where's care? The box, girl. Uh. Yeah. Um, I forgot the question. I'm, I am so full after this week. I was asking how you came to oh. be here. Okay, so a, girl, a girlfriend of mine gave me a CD set, and Patrick and I listened to it, and we're like, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Never listened to him again. Two years later, we ended up in Colorado and um, went to Lawson's church when he was over by the Elkton School This building. is Lawson Purdue. He pastors Karis Christian Center down in the Springs, and he was Carrie's pastor. She grew up in his church, and so he's been... And Lawson came when he was 14 years old. His mother wanted him to come to my Bible study in Lamar, and he wouldn't come, and she bribed him with saying, I'll buy you some worms, fish bait. <laughs> If you came. So he came because of the worms, and he got baptized in the Holy Spirit and called to preach that night. So since he's 14 years old, we've been friends. Well, we came for the mountains, not the worms. <laughs> so we, we came to Colorado because it was beautiful. And um, when we went to Lawson's church, because we were looking for a good church, and we saw the building next door that said Karis Bible College, Andrew Womack, and we're like, hey... Isn't that that guy we listened to on that CD, like, you know, long ago? And um, two weeks later, my husband had signed up for Bible college. And then a year later, I started. And man, I'll tell you what, if you're on the fence about coming here, whoo, you, you got to come. It is, I know you've heard it from everybody that comes up here, but it is life changing. And, it's, and it's, the, it's the ministry, it's what you started, but it is the word of God that they teach here that just changes everything. So when you came, you had uh, some physical problems. What, did, what happened? Um, I had lupus. Y'all ready for the list? If anybody's taking notes, okay. Lupus, Sjogren syndrome, degenerative disc disease in my back girl, um, bulge disc, hypothyroidism, and um, carpal tunnel in my right wrist. Wow. When I got here, and I, I grew up in the Word. My dad was a graduate of Rama Bible Training Center. Um, from, I was born again at five. I was speaking in tongues at seven. I knew what the Word said. I did what the Word said. And, you know, y'all, by the time I got here, I, I just was questioning the power of the word to do what it said it could do because I had done everything that I knew to do and nothing was working and I was getting sicker and I'm dying a little more every day. My, my body, because of the autoimmune disorders, you know, inside every day, it's attacking my body. Those of you with autoimmune disorders, you, you understand that. And the fear that can come along with that because it's, you, you have no control in the natural. What were your symptoms in case people don't um, know all that? Yeah, I had um, extreme fatigue. I had joint swelling, joint pain. Um, the back, when my back would go out, I'd be on my back for weeks at a time. Patrick would have to carry me, you know, everywhere. And it, days where I just couldn't get off the couch because the fatigue and the tiredness, just I couldn't, I couldn't move. Um, so when I got here, I knew a lot of word. If you had asked me healing scriptures, I could have given you my 101 list of healing scriptures from top to bottom. Whatever you needed in the word, I could give it, I could give it to you, but it wasn't working in me. 
And why, it was. Why was that? Do you know? Oh, I know. Okay. Well, I know. Why was it? <laughs> because I grew up and everything that I learned, I took as a rule. I took as a, the, the Bible was an instruction manual for me. Okay, I need healing. So I need to go find out what I need to do to be healed, right? It wasn't about relationship. And coming to Karis in that first, uh, in that first couple of weeks, took a class with Barry Bennett, and I'm not going to look at him or I will cry. Um, <laughs> well, I sometimes look at him and want to cry too. <laughs> oh, man. So I took his class on Galatians, and one of the lessons was about revelation. And all of a sudden, hope was birthed in me because I knew that's what I didn't have. I just knew a lot. I knew what the word said, but it wasn't alive in me. It wasn't, it wasn't my, my word, right? So I took the, the class and I applied it to my life. Guys, you have to, what you learn, you have to practice. You have to put it into practice in your life. And so I learned how to get revelation. First, I learned that it was for me. I thought it was just for y'all super duper people, you know? So I had hope was birthed in me, first of all. Because I'm like, this is what I'm missing. The word isn't mine. That's why it's not alive and active in me like it says it's supposed to be in Hebrews 4.12. So I did what Barry instructed us to do, and I, I went for revelation, and I started out for revelation on healing with Romans 8.11. And man, Father, over the next six months, just move me through who I am in Christ, my authority. The biggest thing was spirit, soul, and body realizing that what you see right now, this is not the real me. Amen. That the real me is on the inside. Amen. That the real me is healed and whole. And what that revelation did for me was it separated that sickness from me. It was no longer mine. Amen. It was in my body, but it was not in the real me. So as I meditated on that and as I thought on that and, and I could just kind of see the sickness pushing, you know, pushing off my body. And as I just meditated on those things, guys, you have to take time. It's not just about finding out what you have to do and doing it. It's about relationship with him. And I can attest to that because it was a few days before I finally, before I received that healing at healing school, March 13th, 2014, um, I wasn't even thinking about healing anymore. I was so enamored with what Jesus did for me on the cross. And a, a few days prior, I had had this vision of, of Jesus standing before his accusers of, and he was looking at me and, and the, the cross on his back as he's walking and he's looking at me and being up on the cross. Man, guys, that if you, if you get a, a vision of what Jesus Christ did for you, that sickness will have no hold on you any longer. When you get an understanding of what he did. And I wasn't thinking about healing anymore. And I'm thinking, man, even if I can't get healed with the, if I can't receive that healing with the, what he's shown me, I got to tell people. I got to tell people about this because if I can't get it, somebody can, you know? And, um, and a few days after that vision that I had, I was standing at healing school during praise and worship. And there were a few words from the stage and, um, about the power in the name of Jesus. And part of that vision that I had had Jesus, when he went to the right hand of the father, turned around and gave me the keys of hell and death. And he gave me the power and I saw him giving me that power. And when they spoke about the name of Jesus, man, the name, I don't think we say it, man, there's power in the name of Jesus, but have we really looked at it? Have we really thought about it? Have we thought about the fact that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of us and every moment of every day, he is there working in you. And all you have to do is believe. 
You just have to believe. And you know, we talk about the things that we have to do, right? And there are things that we as believers will do, but it's when you have that relationship and that fellowship with God that that doing becomes natural. Like you'll just be, you'll just be walking and there'll be a pain in your foot or whatever it is. And up from the inside of you just comes that no, in the name of Jesus, pain you go. Yeah. And that yeah. isn't you just doing what the word says. That's you, the Holy Spirit, backing your words with his power. It's something that comes from the inside. The things that we do, that's what makes the things that we do have effect. That's what makes the things that we do powerful when it stems from relationship, when it just flows out of you, when you do the word with the not, without even realizing that you're doing the word, that's when it becomes quick and active and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I love Greg Moore's book, the, uh, Your Healing Door was instrumental in, in my healing. And I can't remember the exact quote, but I'm going to paraphrase. And it said, every word you speak, every lie of the devil that you reject is one more swing of the sword of the spirit that will completely cut you free from that Amen. sickness and disease. Amen. Amen. So how long did this take? What, how long was the process that you were talking about? For me, so I was sick for 13 years, but once I learned about revelation and really started applying that to my life, it was six months. Six months from beginning to end. And did somebody lay hands on you or was it just revelation? It was just the word. I'm standing down there at, at, in praise and worship and those words from the stage came and out of my mouth came, in the name of Jesus, lupus, you leave my body. Sjogren's, you leave my body, back you be healed, thyroid you be healed, carpal tunnel you be healed in the name. And it was just, it was just calm. It was in quietness and confidence is your salvation, Isaiah said. And that's all, that's all it was. And I went back to my seat. I knew I was healed. It was done. And I heard God say, you are healed from the top of your head to the tip of your toes and you will walk in divine health. And have you ever had any more problems with those things? Has it ever tried to come back on you? Oh, absolutely. The enemy tries all the time to convince you that you didn't get what you got, <laughs> that you don't have what you had, right? And, and it is just a pro, you just got to reject those thoughts. You reject it with his word. You reject it with the word that he spoke to you, you know, with your word, with that word that's alive and, and active in you. So when the symptoms come, you know, and, and they, they do, then you just say, you know what, God, I know this isn't sickness returning. I know this isn't my disc bulging again in my back. I, I know it's not it. This is a lie of the enemy. Just like, um, uh, Jonah. I always get Jonah and Noah mixed up. I don't know why. Um, Jonah in the, in the belly of the whale, he said, these are lying vanities. He was looking at his situation. God had called him to go somewhere and he's looking at his situation and it didn't look good. He's in the belly of a whale. How does that even, how do you even breathe in there? I, I don't get that. It, it had a stink in there too. I, anyway, <laughs> sorry. You've been meditating on that, haven't you? I have. <laughs> I have. I put myself in that, in that belly of the whale, and I'm thinking, what would I be thinking? You know, and he said, these are lying vanities is what they are. They are, they are just lies of the enemy. They're a reflection of what used to be in you. They're just a reflection. And, and the enemy has no new tricks. He'll bring the same pain. He'll bring the same lab reports. He'll bring the same whatever. And I, I tell you, I've had some, um, with the thyroid, I've had some bad lab reports, but I don't have any symptoms. So I don't care what the labs say. <laughs> I am asymptomatic. Amen. I don't care if, my, if it says my thyroid quits. I am asymptomatic and he sustains me. He is the one who gives me, who gives me life. You know, that's a good word. Jonah 2.8 says, they that observe lying vanities uh, shall not prosper. Is that what it said? Forsake, Forsake their, own their own mercy. Lying yes. vanities. Lying That's vanities. a good way of saying it. Yes. And it actually means if you, if you look out the Hebrew, it says falsehood of breath is how it's translated, which basically means somebody blowing smoke. <laughs> full of hot air, right? The enemy is just Amen. full of hot air. He, he doesn't, 
You know, this is hard to explain, but this is what Karis does for so many people is it gets the word to where it becomes alive. You knew the scriptures, but they weren't alive because it was just, if you read this like a book with your brain and don't read it with your heart, it doesn't carry the same life. That's right. Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is quick. That word quick in the King James means alive and it has to become alive. This is a live book, but you could read it as a dead book. It's when you read it with your heart, and this is what you're describing is you knew scriptures, but when they came alive and it's because of a relationship, this is what Carrie emphasized. I emphasize this. It's really what Karis is all about, trying to get things that maybe people have heard to become something that you hear with your heart instead of your head. And it's not hard. God makes it so easy. All it is is reading. It's knowing his word. The more you know his word, the more you know him. And when you read it, change how you read it. Remember that his promises are true and everything that you read in the word is for you. It pertains to you. If you are a child of God, you are not disqualified. For 15 years, I was in complete rebellion against God. I had two failed marriages. I was an alcoholic. I I cheated, I was cheated on, you know, I, I, if I probably did most everything that would, anyway, <laughs> so you're not disqualified. He loves you in the midst of that. The goodness of God brought me back to repentance in the midst of my sin, in the midst of my rebellion, he was there. I love that verse that says um, that the mercy of God follows me and that every day of my life, even when, even when you mess up, he is running after you. He wants to overtake you. He wants to overtake you with, with, your, with his goodness. Don't let the enemy put those thoughts in your mind that he's not going to do that for me because of what I've done. It doesn't have anything to do with what you've done. It has everything to do with Jesus, what Jesus did for you. You know, my personal testimony is that when I got turned on to the Lord 55 years ago, man, the word just came alive to me. And honestly, the word has been alive to me in so many areas. And as you were talking, I was I just thinking, I don't totally relate. But then I thought about finances. I knew all of the scriptures on finances, but they were not working in my life. And it was because of religious traditions that had made it of no effect. And I mean, it was 1996 when I got a revelation and then it was cons uh, consummated in 2002 when the Lord told me I was limited in him. And I mean, the it's just come alive. You know, Pastor Cheon, I mentioned I was uh, visiting with him and, and I'm impressed with what God's doing with him. But when he saw all of this, he was really impressed. And he says, I need a revelation of finances. And he asked me to pray for him. And uh, I'm sure he knows the same scriptures, but there's a difference when the word comes alive on the inside of you, it releases its power. And until it comes off that page and into your heart, it just doesn't work. And that's what you're describing. Exactly. You and even with, even with finances, at the heart of that is knowing that your father is a good God and he provides. Absolutely. And if you don't have that foundation that God is going to provide what you know about prosperity in the word, just it, that, that's what makes it come alive. You know, and that's what I love about the word is you can learn a new aspect of, of God. You, it never grows old. You can learn something new every day. I like in Revelation where the, the beings with all of the eyes constantly turn and they every time they turn, they say, holy, holy, holy. And I think that's because they see another aspect of the Father. And they're going to be doing that for eternity. Amen. You know, and we think we've got 80, 90, 100 years and oh, I know all there is to know. And I know, you know, God, you, we don't, we don't know anything. It doesn't matter how much you know, we don't know anything. You know, there is so much more of him to learn and grow. And, and when we read the word, um, there's a verse in John, this keeps coming to mind, um, John 14, 13 and 14, I think it is. Um, Jesus is talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. And he's saying that you read the scriptures for in them you think you have life. Um, but yet you won't turn to me because Jesus is life. And what he was saying, he says, Jesus, Jesus said, you turn to the scriptures. And that word scripture is the Greek word, I think it's graphe, and it means graph. 
Well, what's a graph? A graph just holds information. That's where you find out things. And what Jesus is saying, you're just looking to the word for instructions. You're, you're looking for information. You're looking for details. You're looking for knowledge. He says, but you should be looking in there for me. Amen. It just, Amen. it keeps Amen. coming back to that. When you read the word, it's not to find out how to do something. When you read the word, you're looking for a further revelation of who Jesus is, of who your father is. You're, you're looking to to grow closer to him. And for me, that was, that was the biggest thing. I can't remember who said it, um, but they said rules without relationship leads to rebellion. And that's exactly what it is because you will perform the word and you will do the word. And if you find yourself saying, well, I've, I've done it all and nothing is working for me and you find yourself offended at God, we're treating the word like a gumball machine. You know, we're, 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 find, we're searching for the quarter or the nickel or the dime or, or whatever, and we're searching for that quarter and we're putting it in the slot and we're turning the thing because we know this is what we have to do to get a gumball. And then we turn it and the gumball doesn't come out. And we're like, the machine's broken. It's broke, right? And this is what we do with the word. We look for the quarter. This is how, okay, this is what I need to do in order to get this. We take that, we put it in the gumball machine by acting on it, and then we turn it and we're acting on it and, and nothing comes out and we get angry at the gumball machine. We get angry at the word. This doesn't, this doesn't work. But it's not about that. It's not about the gumball machine. It's not about what you can get out of it. It's what it can put into you. Amen. That's right? awesome. That's awesome. So what's happening in your life since you've been healed and since Karis, what's God doing? So um, Patrick graduated from uh, the third year mission school in 2015. Um, I graduated from the mission school in 2016. Um, then we went overseas to Jordan for two years uh, because Patrick has a huge passion for ministering to the Muslim people. Uh, so we went over there and studied Arabic and I should say I do too, said Patrick. I do too. So it was tough. I remember uh, getting your newsletters and some of your friends, uh, the women were uh, assaulted and mm -hmm. it was dangerous. Yeah, we came, we came back in 2018 because of a death in the family. And I had kind of felt that the Lord was leading us to come back, um, which was, it was, it was hard because our identity was wrapped up in being God's missionaries to the Muslim people, you know, and that wasn't our identity at all. Our identity is child of God, first and foremost. What you do is uh, come secondary or third or, you know. Um, so we came back in 2018 and um, started Fully Known Ministries in 2019. And we do um, online teaching. We've been starting to do some traveling ministry just locally in Michigan now, building some relationships with churches. And Patrick is doing short-term missions now. It took us a couple of years to figure out how to take this passion of missions and do it short-term from the United States. Because in, in our minds, being a missionary means you go and you live there. And, but we also saw that was fairly ineffective, being a foreigner in the Middle East. Um, it, it just, it's hard there. We don't understand, you know, we went to learn the culture, but still there's, they speak in a way that we don't under, that we don't understand. Um, they use different colloquialisms. That's what I'm trying to say. So ministry was, was difficult and, you know, it was a blonde haired, you kind of stood out. Didn't I stood out a lot. Yeah, uh, I was a novelty over there, so it was nice to come back to the states and walk somewhere without everybody turning and going. <laughs> as I'm walking and it by, was, it was uh, actually physically threatening. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Um, in the last couple of months, the um, attacks on Western women started to increase. Um, so I was very thankful that I had Patrick. Well, God and Patrick. Well, to Patrick take care is of me. a tough guy. Yes, he is. I mean, he can handle himself. He he's awesome. He was our security guy, and he gave me some stories <laughs> about things that they went through. And I guarantee you, I wouldn't mess with Patrick. <laughs> they'd travel with me, and during the afternoon when we weren't holding services, I'd go into their room, and they'd have a human figure there, and they'd be drawing their guns and shooting with a laser at the thing. And, and then this Kurt Owen would teach everybody how to kill somebody with a credit card, if you had to. <laughs> it's 
weird. <laughs> so you've written some books. What have you got here? I have. Um, uh, this, The Unhealed Believer, What to Do, What You've Done It All, because that's what I felt like when I came, uh, how I would have identified my... The Unhealed Believer was my identity when I came. I was a believer, but I... I didn't identify. I identified with the sickness in my body. Um, and I have unhealed in quotation marks because it's just untrue. Uh, you might have sickness in your physical body, but you are not unhealed. Amen. You Amen. are the healed of the Lord. And the book is um, just the journey that Father took me through. It, it, it will teach you how to do exactly what he did for me how to take you from that word that you know and how to for you in your own journey, because it's not a formula, but you can take the principles that are in this book, apply them to your life, and he'll take you down different paths of what you need to know, what you need to learn, what you need to, to finally be able to receive. Um, but, but I guarantee you take those principles and you apply them because they are biblically based. They are straight from the word. They will have the same result in, in your life. So that's what the unhealed believer is about. And Matt, you can give it away if you give it away if you want. Someone and here. I just got a copy of this one, I think two days ago. This must be hot off the press. It is. This is um, set your sights, change your focus, receive your healing. Um, this just came out August 1st. It's a 365 day daily devotional. Um, and it's all about healing. It's very short. It gives you a scripture to think on. It gives you just a little uh, interesting tidbit about that verse. But my favorite part of what God did in this book is the part that's hit your mark. And it is how you apply that word. What do you do? Because so many times we know what the scriptures say, but we don't know, ooh, hey, look at this. Y'all see the lights? We must have had the electricity go off. This is our backup generator, I think. Oh, he's so sneaky. Isn't this awesome? <laughs> and we're getting a light show. I feel like I need to break out in song and dance or something with the, with <laughs> well, the lights. Well, you can. I'm not going to okay. that for sure. <laughs> okay. So if somebody wants to get, uh, become a part of your ministry, go check it out. What do they do? So if a person oh, wants to get your ministry, have we got this on? No. We're gone. Okay. All right. If a person wants to get your ministry, what do they do? How do, how do they find you? Oh, Matt. Here, give that oh. to you. So you can go to fullyknownministries.com. Um, the, the missions aspect of Fully Known Ministries is not on the website because we, we just can't advertise that with the places Patrick is going now. Um, but you can go there. There's hours of teaching. Um, there's hours of videos. There's uh, articles. Yeah. So if, uh, do you travel and minister? or I mean, if somebody wanted you to come speak or something, are you available? Yeah, we have um, actually just started within the last uh, month or two uh, doing traveling ministry. We've, we focus mainly on Michigan right now, but I would never turn down an invitation. So absolutely. Amen. Can Amen. you preach? I can preach. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think she can.